This lecture is part of a course entitled Complete Guide for Water Treatment Plant Design. You can find the link in the description box. Hello everyone. We will start the clarification lectures by the rectangular sedimentation tank. We will begin by an overview. This is a, a basic drawing of a rectangular sedimentation tank. Actually, it is a, a section of uh, this tank. As you can see, the water enters through an uh, inlet structure. We have here uh, usually a, a baffled wall and the water will enter uniformly into this uh, uh, sedimentation tank and also with minimal disturbance and then the particles will be able to settle down by gravity. These particles will form a, a sludge layer and in order to remove this layer we have here a mechanical uh, a device equipped with flight scrappers. These are the flat scrappers and uh, this device will uh, move it will uh, rotate and uh, these scrappers uh, will remove uh, uh, this sludge and will move them into this hopper. In this hopper, the sludge will be withdrawn, uh, whether uh, by gravity if possible or through a pump. It will be uh, pumped for further treatment uh, in order to be safely disposed or uh, reused if possible. Then the clean water will leave through uh, an also an effluent uh, structure to uh, minimize the turbulence as much as possible and it will leave for further treatment through um, filtration. This is another drawing uh, that is more sophisticated. Also, we can see here the influence structure. The water enters uh, through this structure. Uh, we have here the hopper equipped with a pump in this case. Uh, also the scrapper that is uh, moving and uh, equipped with flights to uh, remove the uh, sludge layer and direct it into the hopper. And also, as you can see here, the effluent wares or the uh, effluent structure that will collect the water and transfer it into the uh, outlet channel. This is a, a real life uh, sedimentation tank. As you can see, these uh, tanks are placed one beside the other. So uh, let's say that this is the top view, as you can see. So we have here two tanks. Why we place them one beside the other for uh, construction purposes to lower the cost since we will have w common walls. So uh, if I have more sedimentation tanks, we have more common walls, so this will reduce the costs. In this case, we have uh, four sedimentation tanks that are placed uh, one beside the others. These are the common walls. And on the top of these walls, you can see that uh, we can place sidewalks for uh, inspections or for uh, in case of maintenance works. So these basins are placed longitudinally with a common wall. The flow is horizontal, so we have a horizontal flow. It is a steady flow, a uniform flow also with minimal disturbance. Our aim is to have a laminar flow in all the parts of the settling zone. We also have an inlet structure to distribute the, the water over the entire cross section. The particles are removed when they reach the bottom of the settling tank. The sludge will be also removed by uh, these rotating uh, scrappers, these mechanical collectors, and then the water will be collected through these lounders that you can see here in this uh, picture and transferred into uh, an outlet the channel that is usually uh, at the end of uh, this tank for further treatment. In the next few slides, we will be designing the four zones of the sedimentation tank. The inlet zone that is usually uh, consisting of perforated baffles, so a perforated wall uh, that will uniformly uh, disperse the water within the tank. The settling zone, so this is where the particles will settle down 
the sludge zone consisting of the scrapper that will be rotating also uh, of this hopper and the outlet zone consistent consisting of the uh, affluent wear we will start by the first component of a rectangular sedimentation tank which is the inlet structure so the water will enter through an uh, inlet pipe into the inlet uh, zone which usually consists of a, a baffled wall and this wall will uh, evenly distribute this flow into the settling zone as i have already said the main purpose of the inlet structure is to evenly distribute the flow and suspended particles across the cross section of the settling zone so this structure could be a baffled wall, it could be uh, a perforated channel. So in this case here we have a baffled wall and if I uh, draw a section, so let's say that this is the section. So this baffled wall will have circular holes that are evenly distributed within this wall and actually the water will flow through them so it will flow through these uh, perforations and this will allow the even distribution of this flow across every point of this sedimentation tank so what's the goal of this inlet structure it is to allow a dissipated velocity also a minimal disturbance we have to limit as much as we can any disturbance within the water so that the particles can settle down otherwise they will stay within the water stream and they will leave without meeting the uh, sedimentation purpose also a well-designed inlet structure will limit flow short circuiting when we say short circuiting uh, it is when the water leaves the tank without meeting the retention time so when it leaves uh, quickly or when it takes a, a, a quick uh, direction and leaves rapidly the uh, sedimentation tank and the particles won't have enough time to settle down and this usually happens when we have a bad inlet uh, design when the flow is not equally distributed also a well-designed inlet structure will limit dead zones what does dead zones mean so let's say that this is the top view of the rectangular sedimentation tank and this is the inlet pipe and this is the uh, inlet zone so if i uh, designed badly my uh, my uh, sedimentation tank so the flow will only uh, be through a, a, a one or a limited zone so uh, just it will take uh, this direction and i will have dead zones within uh, this hatched uh, area so no sedimentation will take place in this area so these become uh, useless zones and we will lose sedimentation uh, efficiency because uh, the retention time will be lowered so to achieve the above requirements each inlet opening must face a baffle to distribute equally the flow and also an important note in no case should the design permit a waterfall we must avoid at all cost a waterfall into the tank because this will uh, create turbulence into the water and this will highly affect the efficiency of the sedimentation process this is a 3d shape of an uh, inlet structure this is a stealing wall or a baffled wall and this is uh, the most commonly used inlet structure so the water will be incoming through an inlet pipe and then it will enter into the inlet uh, chamber and it will leave uh, through these holes it will evenly leave notice across all the parts of the sedimentation tank we can also use a channel or flume also the water enters uh, through this inlet pipe uh, into this channel that is perforated and then the water will leave 
under this uh, uh, baffle uh, wall into the tank. In our design, we will focus on this type uh, of inlet structure. So to design this stilling wall, we have to place a diffuser wall approximately two meters downstream the inlet pipe. So we have to place this perforated wall two meters downstream the pipe. And then we have to perforate this wall uh, with holes that have a, a diameter of 0.1 to 0.2 meters and they are spaced about 0.25 to 0.6 so from the midpoint to the uh, midpoint it is uh, between 0 0.25 to 0 0.6 meters these holes must be evenly distributed across the uh, the wall and the lowest port should be 0.6 meters above the basin flow so uh, the lowest row let's say it must be at 60 centimeters above the basin floor so this is how uh, our inlet structure will would look like so the water uh, will enter through this uh, this uh, influent pipe and it will uh, accumulate uh, in this inlet chamber at two meters we have this a wall and the perforation as you can see here uh, they are called orifices or perforations and the water will be uh, evenly uh, distributed within the sedimentation tank